Today, I'm gonna to be showing you 10 of my best tips and tricks to make your videos look more professional using CapCut. Let's get started. Now, right now, I'm just using the CapCut app on my computer. This is also available on mobile devices or iPads or anything else like that. And I'll include a link in the description so you can be able to download it for yourself. Now, before we get started, I do wanna say that most of these tips that I have for you are available on the free version. There are a few that will require a pro upgrade, but you can always try those out in the trial version and see if you like them or not, or determine for yourself if those are worth the, the pro account. So the first trick I'm gonna show you is how to put text behind a person. This is a really cool effect that you see in a lot of different videos. So let me show you how to do that. So from your home page, all you want to do is click on the Create Project button right up here at the top. And then once you have your new project opened, you want to make sure over here in your Details section, it says Arrange Layers Turned On. If that says Off, you won't be able to do this. So you need to go down to Modify, and then you'll toggle this on or off, and you'll make sure that this is toggled on, and then click Save. Okay, next we just wanna bring in the clip that we wanna to use to put the text behind. So you go up here to import. I'm just gonna use this one. We're gonna open that up. And then we're just gonna drag that down to the timeline here like that. And then what we wanna do is create a text layer. So we just click above the video clip. We add text and we'll just find one that we like here. Let's say I wanna try that one. So we click and drag that down. We put that on the track above the video. Okay, and now you could change that out to say whatever you want. Let's say I want this to say, and then what we wanna do is select the video clip that's below there, and we wanna drag a copy of that up above. You're just pre gonna press the Alt key on your keyboard and click that video clip and drag it above the text and release. All right, so now we have a duplicate layer of the same exact video on top of the text and below the text. Now what I wanna do is on the top layer is I just wanna remove me so that this is the only part of the video that we see and then the text layer will be sandwiched between that. So now this is where the real magic happens is while we have that top layer selected, we're gonna go up to the video options up here on the top and we're gonna go over to remove background we're going to click on Auto Removal, and it's going to take a, set to, a second to remove that. All right, and once that finishes, you can see what it did is it cut me out from the background, and now the text is, is underneath me, but above the background, which is on the bottom. So then you can scroll through. You can see all that is in there. I'm just going to delete those. And next, we're going to create an AI avatar news reporter. This one's really fun. So we're gonna go over here to the side and go to media up here at the top. And then over here, we're gonna to go to library. And we just wanna search for news studio background. You can see a bunch of different options here. And we're just gonna pick one of these, drag it down to the timeline. I like that, that looks pretty cool. Okay, a little news studio there. All right, now we just need to add the text that we want our AI newscaster to say. So we're just gonna go over to text. And it really doesn't matter which one you pick here because we're gonna end up deleting this later. So I'm just gonna go up to the default text, drag that down here. And then here I just wanna type out whatever you want that newscaster to say. And then once you have that, we're just gonna scroll over on the top and go AI avatars. And then you can see there's just a wide variety of different avatars and characters that you can use. I'm just gonna find the one that I like the best. And you could click on it and give you a little preview. Hey, good to see you. All right, and then you just click next. And then on this screen here, you can pick like the tone that you want the, uh, the character to speak in. So let's just go with narrative mail. And today's special report, Andy is And awesome then you go generate, all. you go to generate, you allow, and then it'll add that in there. You can preview it. In today's special report, Andy is awesome, tat is all. There you go. And then you can delete the text now, and then you just report, have that. Andy is awesome. And then now you can resize that. You can make that bigger. You can move him over to the side, whatever you want to do from there. And there you have it. It's that easy. And you now generate your own news report. Tip number three is to build your own dream studio 
all with AI. So now you don't have to build an expensive soundstage and studio. You can just generate that all through AI. So to do that, we're just gonna go up to media and then we're gonna go to AI media and just go all images. So we're just gonna type in modern tech virtual studio and we click generate. And then it brings up some different options that you can kind of pick from. I kind of like this one. And now we're just gonna go up to import media. I'm gonna bring my character back in here. And once again, we're gonna go up to video and remove background, we can go to auto removal. Now you can just play around with the size of this a little bit, move you around wherever you want to match the background the best. And then you can extend, you can extend the background. And there you go, that easy to now create a virtual studio so you don't have to worry about building this in practical and you could change it out for every video if you'd like. Tip number four, I'm gonna show you how to blur a face with motion tracking. So let's just delete these out here. And I'm just gonna find a media clip here and I'm just gonna add this clip down here just for our example. And then what we wanna do is again, press the Alt key and drag that up to the timeline above that. So now we have the two identical clips on top of each other. And now what we wanna do is we wanna apply a blur effect to the top. So we're just gonna go up to effects I'm gonna type in blur, lots of different blur options. I'm just gonna use this one. We're gonna apply that to that picture. Now that blurs out the whole image. What we wanna do is we wanna isolate that to this guy's face. So now over here in the detail special effects option, we wanna go to mask. And then over here, we just wanna click on add mask. And by default, it gives you a square mask, but we're just gonna go to the circle. And then I just wanna drag this over top of the face bring the sides in so it's the right size of the face, just like that. And then we just wanna to go to make sure we're at the beginning of the video and make sure that's right on top of the face. And then over here, mask settings, we just wanna click on add a keyframe. And then we go forward a little bit. And as he moves, we just wanna move that up to the face, add another keyframe and then keep going. As he moves down, bring that over top and add the keyframe and just walk through the whole video like that. That looks pretty good. Oh, moves out of frame, move that down, add the keyframe, and then move again, and then bring that. And you just kind of walk through the video here, and every time he moves, you just wanna move that over. And once you've activated the keyframes, every time you move that, it'll add a new keyframe. And then you can watch it back and make sure that it's lined up the way you need to. If there's anything that you need to fix, like here, he kind of fell out of the frame a little bit and you can adjust it just like that. And that looks pretty good. And this method works if you need to blur out a face or a license plate or a document, your address, whatever the case is, you can do the same way. And now tip number five is to take your own song and remove the vocals to create your own karaoke track. Let me show you how this works. So over here, I just have a song that I have imported and we're just going to take and drag that down to the timeline and then over in the basic section of your control panel we just want to go to separate audio and then down here it has several different options of you can remove individual instruments but for what we're trying to do is we want to separate the vocals so we're just going to click on that and then we're going to click on separate sometimes it could take a few minutes to, to process that but once it's finished it'll now have the music or the instrumentation on top and then the vocals down at the bottom so we'll just skip ahead a little bit to where the vocals come in and you can play it with both of them and it'll sound like this but then you could just mute that audio track and now you'll hear it we'll play that same section and you could hear it without the vocals For everyone's benefit, I won't sing along to it. Or if you want, you could just hear the vocal track. Hey now, baby, got me losing, got me losing my concentration. So then you could just mute the audio track, just have the instrumentation, and now you have your own karaoke music. Tip number six is a real game changer when you can get used to using shortcut keys to really cut down your editing time. And I'll show you a couple of my favorites. The first one is to set in and out point. So I have this video here up at the top and there's a little bit at the beginning, a little bit at the end that I don't wanna keep. You can go to where you want the beginning and press your I button. And then you could go over to the end and say, I wanna stop there and click the O button. Now, when I drag this down into the timeline, it'll only be that video between that in and that out point of the video. So that's kind of nice. 
Then down in the bottom, let's say these are two clips. So right after I hold my hands up like that, I want to separate this as two separate clips. On your keyboard, you just want to hit Control B. And now you have two separate clips to do to work with independently. Another one I use all the time is if you're watching the video along here and you go, oh, the, right at this point, I want the video to start. All you do is hit the Q on your keyboard and it'll cut everything to the left of that and delete it, which is huge. And then we could do the same thing over here. And let's say we want to end just as I'm dropping my hands. And if we hit the W, it'll clip everything to the right of that clip. And you saw it slid everything else, all the other clips to match up to it. So those, you know, on your keyboard, the Q and the W are right there at your, your, your left hand. So you can really watch through the video and edit really quickly that way. And the other one that I use a lot because I like to see everything on the screen at one time is if you hit Shift and Z, it'll fit the timeline to your screen size. So that way it doesn't edit things or it doesn't change anything. All it does is zoom in so you can see more of the timeline, especially once you start editing and everything starts getting condensed, you hit Shift Z and it brings it all back up. If you start using these on a regular basis and you're editing, it will 2X or 3X your editing time guaranteed. All right, so tip number seven is how to share projects to get feedback. So maybe you have an edit, like I've done this edit here, and I wanna send it to a friend to say, hey, give me some feedback. Let me know what this looks like. Or you're doing client work and you wanna send it to a client to be able to hear uh, if they like it or don't, or they have any adjustments. So what you may have been doing is you would export the video, it would render it, you'd email that to them, they type up notes. But I wanna show you an easier way to do that is right next to the export button is the share button. If you click on that, you can name this project and call it first draft. And then you select your workspace that you wanna do that in, uh, which I'm just gonna use my default space. And then you go create link. And right now it's uploading exactly what's on the timeline to my workspace. And now here you can decide how you wanna share that. If you wanna share anybody that has the link or uh, only certain people. So we're just gonna say everyone that has the link can can look at this and then all you need to do is copy that link email it or text it to your friend or client whoever you need to get feedback from and then when they click on that link they'll be able to watch the video back right on their web browser and then every time they leave a comment it'll timestamp that where at in the video they're leaving that comment so that you can see exactly what their notes are where they're talking about and it makes it a great way of being able to be collaborative all in one space rather than them watching the video and writing out notes manually. It's really nice. Now, tip number eight is great if you are finding yourself using the same assets over and over again, or if you're editing for a YouTube channel and you have a very similar template that you use each time. This is how to set up a brand kit. So what we're gonna do is on our homepage here, we're gonna go into the, the spaces, and you can either create a new one or use your existing space. I'm just gonna use the one that I already have here. From here, you can upload anything that you use regularly. So you click on Upload Media. I'm just gonna click these and go Open. These are some end cards that I use regularly. And then it adds that into the media here. And then you can add as much as you want. You want graphics, you got logos, music, whatever you want. You could even add folders here to keep them organized. And then when we go back to Home, and we click on create a new project. And anytime you need those brand assets, you just go to spaces and there they are, already loaded in, ready for you to use and drop on your timeline as you need to. Now for tip number nine, I'm gonna talk about improving your overall performance of CapCut. If you've ever been editing, especially when you get a lot of assets and a lot of video files and audio and everything layered in there, and you notice that CapCut starts running a little bit slower, I'm gonna show you a way to fix that. We're gonna go over to details and we're gonna to go to modify and then we wanna to go to performance, and then here you see proxy. And what we wanna do is turn that on. Now, what that does is it generates a lower resolution working file of any of your media so that it's less taxing on your processor to play those videos back. It doesn't affect the overall final output of the video, but it just gives you a, a smaller, compressed version of the video to work with in editing and then when you render it, it'll be the full resolution. 
So once you have that proxy toggles on, you click on Save. And now you can see when you click on these files to add them, it takes a second to process them because it's literally just rendering out a compressed, smaller resolution file of that. So it takes a little bit of processing power and a little bit of waiting up front. But now as you're editing with the video, it'll play back much smoother. And then when you render it, it'll go back to that original full resolution video. And then for tip number 10, I'm going to show you how to add captions to your video automatically. So all we're going to do is we're just going to find the media that we want to drop in there. I'm just going to take this one. I'll even just make it a little shorter so that we have something to work with here. And then you go up to text and over on the side, you see auto captions. Click on that. Select the language that you want and then click on generate. This takes a few seconds to process the clip and read it. And then the captions appear on the screen just like it's that. An excellent app for being able to buy and sell items, much like eBay or Craigslist or Facebook. Market. And then over here on the side, you can adjust like the color, the size, the look of them, those sorts of things. If you want to do a little bit different, make it bold, whatever you want to adjust that and it applies to all of the text. Marketplace, but I think it's personally one of my favorites. And there you have it. 10 incredibly powerful and useful cap cut tips to make your editing even better and more professional looking. I hope you found this video helpful and I'll see you in the next one.